Kenny, thank you. It looks fun. All right, if you're looking for that perfect dish to bring to your next summer party, how about a vibrant and fresh side that involves grilling fruit? Chef Jim Barnhart is here to show us his recipe for grilled watermelon and tomato salad. Welcome back. Thank you it's so much. It's good to see you. Yeah, thank Boy, you so much. Boy, does that look good. Absolutely, yeah. So, um... We try to cook fresh in the seasons at 1833, and um, this is coming up on our summer menu, yeah. a lovely heirloom tomato and grilled watermelon salad. Um, so, you know, one of the things we like to do is pick a nice ripe watermelon. Can so, we go over that, Jim, on yes. how to pick what? Because I've heard you're supposed to roll it down the aisle at the grocery <laughs> store, then hit it on the side three times. Absolutely. So what I do is I just flip it over. I try to find the spot on it. And if it's yellow, then I'll flick it a couple times. Okay. And if it has a nice deep thump to it, I know that it's ripe. Now, if it's kind of a high-pitched thump, it's not quite ripe. And if that spot is like whitish, yeah. it's probably not going to be a good watermelon. Now, some watermelons don't even have a yellow spot, so that's where thumping it comes into play. Okay. And I would just challenge anybody to thump uh, several watermelons. The one with the deepest thump is the one that you want. <laughs> and people will be looking at you, but you're the one taking home the good watermelon. You're the one taking <laughs> home the good watermelon, exactly. So here I have some watermelon cut up, and we're okay. just going to grill it. Um, and what you want to do is just get some good caramelization. Um, you want to bring it to the point where it's just almost burnt, but not quite. So are you losing some of the juice, though? You will lose some of the juice, but that's, that's okay, because okay. um, it'll still stay moist. Like watermelons, I don't know the exact ratio, but they're like 80% <laughs> water or something like that. <laughs> I don't know, whatever, they're good. So while this is grilling, we're gonna make the uh, vinaigrette that kind of flavors the watermelon. So okay. we're just gonna take some shallots and put some shallots right in the bowl. Um, and then some lime juice. Whoops. Ooh, lime juice. Lime juice. Um, from the lime, not the lime juice. Yes, right? from the lime, not the lime juice in the container. And yeah. then I like to put the zest of a lime right inside of there. Um, and just about a tablespoon of honey. Mm. And I like to use local honey. Um, it helps with your allergies and things of like course. that. And also helps with the local economy, helps your local farmer. Um, so here we are all grilling right. this watermelon, Is and you can see doing? we have some caramelization oh, going on there. Oh, I see that. There. Yes. Yes. So um, not too long. Not, not too, too long. long. And then what you want to do after this watermelon is grilled, you want to chill it down. After it's chilled down, then you're going to dice it up. Okay. Um, and so that's the vinaigrette right there. It's lime juice, honey, a little bit of lime zest, and some shallots. This is what I made. This and is then. It. That's it. It's all to my name. And we're just going to cube up a couple of tomatoes, just about an inch um, size. Okay. Oh, gosh. And yeah, the I'll same bet. size as you cut your watermelon. So right? you don't use the little uh, grape tomatoes? You can use the grape tomatoes. Okay. I just find that these larger heirloom varieties have a little more flavor to them. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a Mr. Stripey here. A Berkeley tie dye. This is an ox heart tomato. Whoa. Well, I didn't know so all that. So they are just delicious. What's full the difference between those tomatoes? Um, so some are more acidic, some are more oh. sweet, some are more you know round in yeah. flavor mm, and delicious. Mm -hmm. So we'll mix in these tomatoes, okay? And then we're going to mix in some watermelon here. Oh yeah. And that goes right in with that. And we'll swap out from the whisk here if you want to mix oh. it up with that guy. <laughs> Um, I'd make a great sous chef, wouldn't I, Jim? Absolutely would. Yep. Um, Got to so, change out the materials. All right. Oh, gosh, this looks so good. We're going to put some stracciatella on now, the plate. Now, at first I thought that was um, cottage, uh, cheese. cottage cheese. Right. So stracciatella is basically the filling that's in burrata. You could also substitute in this recipe feta cheese or mozzarella oh. pearls. Yeah, that's Any good. Any of those things are lovely. Yeah. So I also like to take a little bit of basil. Tear off some basil, put oh, the basil yeah. in the salad as well. Give it some green, give Absolutely. it some green. A little bit of salt. Oh, um, yeah. Use sea salt or Maldon flake salt, something like that. Mm. Some pepper. Yes. Okay. Look at this. Um, we make a good team. And very simple, right? So that is watermelon, tomatoes, seasoned oh, lovely. You're going to put that on the bed of stracciatella. Okay. 
Super delicious. And make sure you check out foxa.com because we're going to put the recipe on there. Hey, we got to wrap this up. And while I stuff my face, you're going to tell everybody about 1833. Yeah. Go so check them out. 1833, 10 East College Street, Oberlin, Ohio. Seasonal, fresh ingredients, locally sourced from local farms. It's Shout out place. to Groves Fruit Farm. Shout out to Lee Jones, oh my gosh. Chef's Garden. Go check them out, 1833 in Oberlin. We'll have all the details on our website, foxaid.com. It's time to eat. We'll see you right back here at 9.